Hey, good morning everybody. I thought that today I would do a day in the life kind of vlog. I didn't wake up initially thinking about doing this, so it's later than I would normally start. I tend to wake up super, super early, and right now it's 10.15, so I've been up for a few hours and been doing some, some work, just got ready for the day. I was actually editing a, uh, well, it's kind of a secret project, but anyway, got all this done, and uh, so that feels that feels good. I feel like I'm ready to get my day started. So the plan is, we'll see if this actually happens, there's a possibility that something will disrupt it in the middle of the day, for me to kind of take myself out on a, on a writerly date. So I'll give you some details about that later, I guess. So it seems pretty nice outside. I think I'm going to go take a walk. Uh, and uh, maybe enjoy some tunes, a little Chris Stapleton, Martin Smith, Kaleo, I don't know, we'll see. But it's really, really beautiful. I'll take some pictures if there's anything to see. Well, that was cloudier than I was expecting, but happily, it did not rain. The weather service was actually right about that one. So my potential midday plans fell through. So that's actually okay, because I can now do that, that writerly date that I was thinking about. So I'm going to pack everything up. My laptop, which you can see right over there, and uh, everything else that I might need. And then I will be off. So I'll show you what I find. And I'm off. First stop, lunch at Poor Richards, which is a really cool bookstore downtown. Um, so, I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back. So it's show and tell time. I just got back from the movie All Is True which is about William Shakespeare. But before that, I went to Poor Richards and shopped around. It was really interesting. I got a couple things. So the first thing is this. It's the Return of the King with a crazy, I don't know if that's Sauron or what. Look at the, like, is that Aragorn with the winged helmet? I don't know, but it's hideous. And this is one of the unauthorized editions of Lord of the Rings. Uh, Tolkien didn't get a penny from this particular edition, it's from Ace. It's hard to find now because, you know, the Tolkien estate shut it down as soon as they knew that this was an unauthorized edition. It was just that the US was so excited about getting Lord of the Rings that they uh, pirated the entire thing. So not exactly the best time in art history, but I got this because it's interesting and I collect Tolkien, weird Tolkien editions. Like, let me just, let me show you couple of other weird ones that I've recently gotten. Uh, yeah, but what about these? <clears throat> so my most recent, apart from the one that I just showed you, is this one, Fellowship of the Ring. If you look closely, there are emus and weird bulbs and nothing makes sense. And Tolkien's on record about this particular edition, saying that he feels like he's at a madhouse. Did the people even read the book? Do they have any clue what it's about? Um, I think the answer is yes, they did not read this. Um, there's also this one, also so ugly, love it because of that. And of course, you can forget if you've watched my worst cover videos, my all-time favorite worst cover of all time, The Forbidden Romance of Legolas and Gimli. Uh, anyway, I digress. So. Uh, oh, I got one more thing at Poor Richard's as well. So I was checking out with The Return of the King and I said, oh yeah, it's the unauthorized edition and some of the stuff I just told you. And then the bookseller said, hey, let me show you one other thing. It's this, I've literally never seen this before. I need to get a frame for it now so it's gonna end up being a little bit more expensive. But there is this map. Check it out. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. So it's Middle Earth, obviously, but it's... Not, normally it's oriented uh, horizontally instead of vertically, so that's already a little weird. But if you'll notice, around the sides, it's all that weird uh, emu bulb stuff. 
that doesn't make any sense and I got all all excited. I mean this is a super rare find. Um, I'm sure it's worth a lot more than I paid for it. So I got all excited and got another map that I don't need because you know those things happen. And then I had lunch which was delightful and a lavender latte which is like the girliest drink that you can possibly get but I love them anyway. And I sat there and I wrote for my writerly date, you know, I went to the bookstore, wrote my own book. So I wrote about 1500 words on the Fury, the Fury and Rising sequel and it was a very exciting 1500 words. Things went down, people. I'm sure I'm going to rewrite so it sounds a little bit better, but I felt like I was getting into the groove of it by the end when things really get wild. So. That was good, and then I went over to the theater, which is really cool looking. And saw All is True, which is the story of Shakespeare after he retires and moves from London after the Globe Theater burns down to back to Stratford-upon-Avon, where his wife and his two daughters still live. Um, his one son, Hamnet, that is not a typo or something that the story made up, had died before that, uh, about 10 years before that, I want to say when he was 11, or maybe it was 15 years before, in any case. So it's Kenneth Branagh playing Shakespeare, going back to Stratford-upon-Avon and kind of coming to terms with his son's death and how he's not writing anymore and they reference a lot of different aspects of his life like his relationship with his wife and how it was scandalous at the beginning the kind of love lives of his younger uh, his daughters and then their relationship to him and to Hamnet and we have the Earl of Southampton come in as well that Shakespeare wrote a lot of sonnets to when he was much younger like the Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day and things that a lot of people think were or assume were written about his wife or some other female fling but actually was written about this this man so it's a little bit about their relationship that part was was uh quite good but short i don't think that ian mckellen who plays the earl of southampton should have been on the poster at all his part is really well done because it's ian mckellen and kenneth Branagh, who i'm sure would just be incredible no matter what they did together uh, just as a scene uh, so it was really good, but he had a very small part compared to Judith and Susanna, for instance, the, the two daughters. I don't know either of the actresses' names. I hadn't seen them in anything else that I could think of anyway. Judy Dench plays his wife, Anne, so she deserved to be on the poster, for sure. I, don't know, I had mixed feelings about the movie. I don't know. I don't know how great this is as a day in the life kind of situation, but whatever. If people want to watch it, that's... That's great. The movie itself was very dark. So dark in the sense of subject matter a little bit, but I mean more like actually physically dark. It was kind of hard to see. Everything was by candlelight and they didn't add any additional lighting. And so there were scenes where I was thinking if I'm if I weren't in a pitch black theater, there's no clue I would know what was going on. Like there's a scene toward the end when Shakespeare is uh, it looks like he's crying over his son's grave, but it's so far away and it's so dark and there's nothing but the light of, I don't know, the moon or something that it was hard even to see in that dark theater. So that was, that was a bit rough, but there were a few really good scenes, moments when Kenneth Branagh really stepped up and delivered like this speech. A uh, few places where there were, of course, Shakespeare lines or this one cool part where it, when um, the Earl of Southampton comes, Shakespeare, played by Kenneth Branagh, says the, uh, uh, recites his own sonnet, the one, when I, in, wait, they said it twice, let's see if I can remember, something fortune in men's eyes, but weep my outcast state. Anyway, it's that sonnet if you know Shakespearean stuff. So Kenneth Branagh, as Shakespeare recites it, and he means something very specific when he, when he recites it. And then Ian McKellen, the Earl of Southampton, recites it again at the end of the scene, and he means something different when he says it. And they're both two of the best Shakespearean actors alive, and so 
hearing them do that and get across such different things and that that was cool. I really I really, really enjoyed that. And there were little nuggets of information that I had known about Shakespeare and so it was kind of cool to see how they interpreted that. Like everybody wonders why he left his wife Anne just to the second best bed. Is it a snub? Is it a, is it like a positive thing? Um, there's all kinds of ways to interpret it but it was interesting how the how the movie did it. So yeah it wasn't sold at the beginning of the movie because it was a bunch of little vignettes of just a line or two and then the editing was so slow that it would be like like for instance Shakespeare sees this boy he keeps seeing kind of visions of his son Hamnet when he was alive so this 11 year old boy give or take comes up to him at the beginning of the story and says something like Mr. Shakespeare I've written a story can you help me finish it and Shakespeare turns to him and says no I have no more stories left to tell and then the boy disappears and then Shakespeare turns around and he's he's severely backlit it's just like his you know profile his image and it just kind of stays like that for a long time and so I thought oh, it's kind of on the nose or something but by the time it got later on in the movie I thought that it was well done there were a couple things I would have tweaked but um, all in all I thought it was a good good performance by Kenneth Branagh there were a couple of lines that got me a little bit misty so yeah it was a it was a fun writerly day I had a whole to-do list of things and I didn't actually get to most of those things but but it was good anyway and uh, so I guess I'm gonna just, I don't know, get some of those things done that I intended to get done, probably. That would be, that would be good. I have to plan a bunch of launch stuff. So my book launch, Fury and Rising, it's coming out in a month, which is super exciting on the one hand, and on the other hand there's a lot of planning I need to do because there's a lot of fun stuff coming up, but I need to actually like schedule it all out and... I just don't wanna. I wanna. I wanna just have a cup of tea, but got to got to get things ready, and I will let you know when I have more updates on that front. If you're interested in Virian Rising, by the way, or any of the cool, you know, merch, you can go to my website carly.stevens.com, or you can pre-order it, or any anything like that. If you have questions, you can just let me know below. I don't want this to turn into a whole pitch or anything. So thanks for following me around today. I hope that you enjoyed this impromptu day in the life of a writer and I'm off to do productive things. Alright, I'll see you soon. Bye.